Okay, since this is our first class, I'm going to take it step by step um, and really break down all the mechanics that I know and that I live and die by. Um, so if you don't have a catcher, you don't need one. You don't need a glove right now if you don't even have a glove. Um, all you need is a ball or a pair of socks, whatever you have. And we're going to start with wrist snaps. So the way you should always think about gripping a ball, for me, it's a letter C, so it's going to be backwards for you guys but there is just this letter C. So that's how you should just hold your fastball. And you should be very loose. You don't wanna grip the ball like a maniac like this. On this letter C, just use your three fingers and just grip it easy. So if you look underneath here, there should be a little tiny gap, not too loose to where the ball is gonna slip out, but just loose enough to where you're comfortable and you can wiggle it and you still have control. Again, you don't wanna grip it like you're trying to kill it. Just nice, easy, relaxed. So once you have that grip, if you don't have a partner, again, it's fine. I have one because it's just easier for me. I'm going to show a couple of wrist snaps. I'm going to explain how you're supposed to do that. So I'm going to be close to my partner, or you can be close to a wall or to a net. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to be relaxed with my athletic stance. You don't have to get super wide, but just be comfortable. You're going to have your wrist at your side, and you're just going to snap your wrist. It's okay. You're just going to be here with a straight arm. You're just going to snap. The more of these you do, the better. On average, before you start a game or a practice, get like 50 of these in. These are really good to get your wrists warm. So what you want to have is at your side, you should have a straight arm here. And you want your wrist to have a little bit of a cock backwards. So if I were to drop a ball, it's like I'm giving a high five to the ground, right? So I'm here, I'm just gonna copy back, and you just wanna snap. That's all you want is this motion here. If you're having troubles with your arm moving, so if my arm wants to move, it would look like this. I don't want that big finish yet. I just wanna work on my wrist snap, right? I just want it straight like that. So if you're having an issue, with bringing your arm all the way up, hold your wrist or have mom or dad or brother or sister or friend, have someone hold that wrist at the bottom for you and just snap. You don't want anything to move but your wrist. So if you are having trouble with that wrist control, just grip it down here and still snap. It's nice and easy. to peek at you guys. Good. I'm just watching you guys from a different angle. So good, Bridget. Good. Molly, don't start with your arm up. I just want your arm at your side. Just keep it down at your side like this and then just snap. You don't need a big circle like this yet. Just snap from your hip, Molly. Another way to check if you're getting your spin right, you should be able to see a spin that looks like this. It'll look opposite for you guys. But when you spin it, you should be able to see those seams move just like this. So if your seams move in an oblong way or they're shaken, you want them to just rotate really fast this way. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it should be spinning something like that. So when I snap it here, that spin should be going Top to bottom.
Good. Get a couple more of these in. We'll move on to our next progression. All right, do about five more. These are looking good. All right, so with our next progression, so as you're getting ready to warm up for like a game, always start with wrist snaps. Once you learn other pitches, like if you have a change up, screwball, rise ball, all of those fun things, then we'll add those snaps too, but we'll work on those couple weeks from what you want to do is we're going to um, incorporate our arms and still only have a wrist snap. So how about you So a letter T is literally how it is. So my body is going to be the long part of the letter T and then my arms are going to be the top part. So all you're going to do is have a nice relaxed T. So if I were to drop this ball, both of my arms should kind of just be like pointing towards the ground, just nice and relaxed. We don't want to be tense or too loose. We just want to be nice and relaxed. All you're going to do is make sure your feet are in a nice straight line. Have your arms in this T and you're just going to come down and snap. Make sure you have a strong left side so that when you're releasing the ball, this arm is hitting your leg. Or if you don't hit your leg, that's fine, but you still need to have a strong left side. So make sure when you come down at the same time, it's that one motion. So it's just going to be nice and easy here. Snap. We're still just working on our snap right out the bottom. So we're just here nice and easy. And we're going to snap. It's okay if you bring your arm up when you're snapping, but just to make sure you're not staying up, you're going to snap. And if you want to bring it up after that snap, that's fine. But we don't want to snap and bring it up like this. We don't want that. We just want to be here nice and relaxed. Snap, and then that's when you bring it up. We don't need our leg yet. So this should all just be within your arms. So you don't need to drag that back leg or anything yet. Make sure you guys start, Bridget, make sure you start with this glove hand up too. Yep, just like that, and then you snap them down at the same time. So when you go to release the ball, make sure that glove comes down at the same time. Better. Good, Maddie. Is it Quinn? It says Quinn's iPad. So Quinn, make sure when you're releasing, you don't want to move your legs, right? We're just going to be here and just snap those arms. We don't need to turn our legs yet. We'll get there. Better. Good. Is it Devery? That's good. I don't want to say your name wrong. Devery Jensen? That's really good. Did I say it wrong? I'll unmute you. Tell me how to say it the right way. I don't want to. How do you say your name? That's my mom's name. Oh, so sorry. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren, okay. <laughs> All right, Caitlin, that's good. Just make sure you start with your arms relaxed here, not above your head. Just start with the relaxed T. So have your glove. We don't want touchdowns yet. Yep, we just want safe. And then just snap down. Yep, just like that. Yep. Good, much better. If your ball isn't going where you wanted to, check your wrist every time. Some of you guys, when you're snapping the ball, when you look down at your wrist, so if I'm here and I go to snap it, my wrist should kind of be, my fingers should be pointing me in the face, right? They should be pointing up. If you go to release and your arm's just like this, you have no wrist snap. That's going to be really bad once we get to a full motion. So make sure you look down and your wrist has that good bend in it. That means you're snapping the ball.
Elena, just for these, just start relaxed here. We don't need to do a full motion just yet. We're gonna get there. Yep, just small teeth and just snap down. Good. All right, get a couple more of these in. Looking good. Make sure when you guys come down and you snap, you're just here and your arms still straight. We don't wanna snap and then cross over our body. We cross over our body when we wanna throw a curve ball or something fancy, not a fastball, right? We just want to snap down and have it still really close to our belly button. So if your arm's too far away from your body, you can always check because your belly button's right here. So when you snap, you should finish and your wrist should be right here kind of holding your belly or your belly button. Good, Quinn. Hopefully if that, that's your name. Hopefully it's not just Quinn. Yeah. Couple more. That looks good, Aislinn. All right, do about two more each. And we'll move on to our next progression. Good, okay. So for our next one, we still don't need our legs yet. We're gonna use our legs soon, but not just quite yet. We wanna focus really hard on our waist. So our next progression, still use your left arm. You're still gonna have your legs shoulder width apart. Instead of a T though, we're gonna go up to a letter K. So a lot of you guys do Ks and then we step, which is good, but we're not gonna do that yet. So when we do a step with our K, we wanna drag that back leg. I don't wanna work on our legs just yet. I still want to focus on my arms and my wrists only. So I'm still going to come up to a K. I'm just going to come down and snap. So we're progressing these step by step. So if you want to come up like this and snap, you can, but still don't incorporate those legs just yet. If you want to start stagnant just like this and release, that's fine also. But no legs. We're still working on getting our arm around and down and snapping our wrists. Make sure your arm is as close to your hip and your stomach as possible. So when you come down to snap, you should almost be hitting yourself in your side with your elbow. That's gonna allow you to get really good snap at the bottom when you're ready to release. Good. Lauren, those are good. When you come up, try to get your arm to be a little bit higher, like, like you're reaching for the stars, I guess. You're just coming back on an angle, which is fine. It still looks good, but just work on getting it up a little bit higher. That way you have more snap and more whip at the bottom. Good, yep, good. Good, Molly, make sure you're coming down and you're snapping hard. Your arm's kind of doing like a little captain hook thing. We just want it to snap here and just have to be relaxed. We don't want to jerk it all the way up, okay? Better. Good. Queen, when you come up, try not to have your arm bent over your head like this. For these, you wanna just have a nice, it could bend a little bit. We don't want it to bend over our head though. Yep, just like that. And then you just bring it right straight down. Good. Faith, those are good. When you go to release, don't jerk it so much. Your snap is really good. Just be released. I mean, sorry, be relaxed when you snap and then finish strong. You don't wanna jerk it when you finish. Your snap is really good though.
Good, get about 10 more of these in each. Good, Elena. Bridget, try to bring your arm up just a little bit higher. You're coming like here, which is good, but just bring it up a little bit higher and then come all the way down and snap. Yep, good. Good, Maddie, make sure you're really snapping hard at the bottom. Don't jerk your arm so much, right? Your positioning is great. When you get here, really work on snapping and then you can bring your arm up. Don't bring your arm up before you get a good wrist snap at the bottom, okay? Better, good. All right, a couple more. All right, for this next one, it's going to be K's, but now we're going to add some legs into it. So you can start with your legs still in a comfortable position, and you can either bring them up like this, or you can start up whatever is comfortable for you. But what we're going to do now is you're going to bring your arms up like a K, and just a little tiny step off the ground. We don't have to step huge, just step comfortable to get our legs working. And you're going to step here and finish. So one thing I want you guys to really work on is when you step to finish, one, that you're balanced. You shouldn't be falling over to the front or to the back. When I pitched, I had a problem falling backwards because my leg didn't come up fast enough. So you really want to work on getting to this position and holding it. You got to have some, a good core and some good quads to make sure that you have a, a strong um, landing. So you're going to be here. Really make sure you balance. And then something else to be mindful of is your back leg, right? We don't want to do a K and just have our leg just kind of hanging out here. We want to really make sure we drive that front, this back knee into your front knee. All of you guys hit right when you go up to the plate. We don't swing and just kind of like leave our legs back here like this. We get deep into our legs and we really push this back leg into our front one. It's the same idea when you're pitching. So you want to be here and really drive that leg all the way up, almost like that flamingo or that number four, if I were to turn this way. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more, then I'll come watch you guys. Yeah, don't forget about that back leg. Super important. Better, Molly. For these, make sure your body is still staying square to your um, to where you're facing. We don't want to finish like this and then turn our bodies, right? That's going to mess up the location of your pitch. You'll have enough reaction time as a pitcher to finish this way and then get ready for the ball. But we don't want to finish and get ready at the same time. So make sure you're here and you're still sideways when you're doing these pace. Bridget, try to hold your finish on this next one, right? I want you to be really here and then be strong in that front leg. Better. Now just keep your shoulders square to me the entire time. So work on that wrist snap. You gotta put it all together as one. Good, Lauren.
but Queen, on this next one, I want you to do your K. And when you finish, still make sure you're facing me, okay? So your knee should be facing your computer screen or your iPad screen. Yep. Better, yep. So try to make sure, you see how when you're going to finish, you're kind of turning your shoulders this way? Keep them towards me for now, okay? Yep, nope. So turn your body some more towards me. When you finish, you can just be pointing right at me like you're gonna need me in my eye through the computer screen. Much better. Good, Elena. Make sure you work on your wrist name at the bottom. Your, your back leg's doing good, but I don't want your arm to cross over just yet. That's for a different pitch, right? We just want to be down here and just snap close to your belly button. Yep. Good, that's good, Bridget. Faith, you have a good back leg, right? When you bring your arms up though, you don't wanna leave your glove arm stranded. We wanna have a strong glove side and a strong front side. So you come up to do your K, make sure you snap. When you go to snap that ball, make sure you snap that glove side down to your leg too, okay? Better, good. Good. Good, Maddie, make sure when you go to snap, you don't leave that leg lagging, right? You wanna bring it all the way up. The quicker we can get our legs through, the quicker that ball is gonna get there. Good, now just work on your balance, still stay square. Good, Isla. Work on your wrist snap. Good, Bridget. Good, Adrian. Caitlin, make sure you hold your balance at the end. Oh, did she leave? Did someone else have that? Okay. Work on your balance, Quinn. If you have to, if you become, if, you, if any of you guys feel like you're getting unbalanced, when you go to land, hop if you have to. Do what you have to to make sure that you're not falling this way or falling this way. Get a couple more of these in. Oh, can you repeat? Go ahead, do a couple um, pitches and then I'll critique it. I was just doing on that one pitch, sorry. That looks good. Make sure when you bring your arms up, Caitlin, you don't want to bring them up like you're calling a touchdown, right? You want to bring them up like you're calling someone safe. So you want to bring them up here, not like bent. Yep, you want to bring it up like this and then straight back down. Yep, now just go straight down. Good, make sure you snap that wrist. You see how when you finish, you can see your, the palm of your hand. You want to see your fingertip, not the palm. So make sure you snap hard at the bottom, good.
Isla, make sure when you go to finish, you don't fall backwards. You have good leg drive, right? So just make sure you have that leg drive and you have that balance. Okay, we're gonna take like a minute, two minute break. You guys can get some water. We've been working nonstop for like 30 minutes now. Take a drink, take a break, take a breather. We'll do one more thing today and then I will unmute you guys and we will keep working on this stuff over the next couple of weeks. But just take a quick drink and I'm gonna show you a joy you can do without my dad is very, very important. <laughs> Okay, everyone good? Hydrated? All right, so for this one, I just want to show you something um, that you can do when you don't need mom or dad. My dad's actually watching me right now because he's still a softball crazy person like I am, even though I don't play anymore. So these are drills that he probably wishes I would have listened to him and did when I was your age and I was pitching. So if it is rainy outside and you don't have mom or dad, something that's really important in softball when you're a pitcher is your arm circle, right? So you can find a wall. Um, this is gonna be my wall for now. I'm gonna do it on this side. So you can do this one of two ways. Can you switch to me? Mm -hmm. So you can either do this with your back to a wall like this, or you can do it with your um, chest facing the wall. The chest facing the wall is the one way that I usually do it. So you're just gonna get here and you're gonna do like a hundred of these. So the way it should be is when you go up, you wanna have your the back side of your hand facing the wall. And then as you start to go up, your finger is gonna be pointing away. You're just gonna do arm circles. What this is gonna help with is sometimes when you pitch, you have a, a tendency to wrap this arm back around. That's how you get shoulder injuries and we don't want that. So when you find a wall or anything flat like this, you're gonna do um, arm circles. So you can go slow. Still make sure you have this glove hand up, right? You wanna work on having a strong front glove side. So you're gonna do wraps all the way around the wall. So you should feel these fingertips the entire time. So if your arm breaks off, you're not against the wall. Something else, if you want your back against the wall, this is just good to make sure that your arm doesn't come backwards like this, right? So if you're doing it, if you're lucky enough, I don't know how you can do this, to have one in front of you and something behind you to create a small room for you. You always want this arm when you can see it. So 100 a day, those are great. Wrist snaps are great. Everything we just did is great. Um, Let's see, arm circles. Yes, that is good for today. Um, the next class, I'm gonna work a lot on leg drive. So today we only got to deal with our arms. So next time when we come in, we'll zip through those wrist snaps. You can get those out of the way off camera. And then we'll skip the T's and just go straight to K's. We're gonna work really heavily on leg drive because that's gonna, that's gonna get you to push out and really get that power and that speed that we all want. So I'm gonna have Coach John step in. All right. Oh, fantastic. I am going to unmute you guys and um, let's start with some questions. Raise your hand if you have a question yes, for Coach please. Kayla. I can anything for you. Who's got a question? Oh my God. Oh, oh Dad does. Go ahead, Dad. Yes, how important are wrist snaps? Um, they're the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. One second. Okay, wrist snaps are the most important thing. So even when you're young, right, if you only have a fastball, if that's your only pitch, you need to perfect it and perfect your spin. Um, when I was pitching, I had fastball, change up, rise ball, screw ball, drop ball, curve ball. I had everything you could think of. And if you're getting thrown into a game, it's more important that your wrist knows how to spin those pitches than it is that your shoulder knows how to do a motion, right? Your shoulder is never gonna forget how to throw a fastball, but your wrist will. So just working on that muscle memory is so important. Um, doing it with a sock every night is great. I've like perfected how to ball a sock. I'll bring socks in 
next week in case you guys don't believe me. I make the best sock balls ever because of softball. Um, it used to get me in trouble because I would just toss them in the laundry in a ball. I don't do that anymore, obviously. But wrist snaps are super important. Any other questions? Go ahead, Maddie. Are you supposed to, are you supposed to flip like this or like uh, that? So it just depends on the pitch you're showing. So on a fastball, it's whatever you're comfortable with. On the pitch. So for me, when I threw a fastball, I would finish just like this. But that finger you're pointing with, that's just something It's kind of like like a tendency. So if you get comfortable doing that and your ball still has good spin, that's okay. Um, usually when you have a finger finish, like like when I used to throw a curveball, right? When I would finish, I would point that finger. So your finger finish depends on the pitch you're throwing. But usually for me, if I were to have that finger finish, I'm throwing a curveball across my body. Does that make sense? So can you do slow motion fast pitch? On the release. On the release. Can I do what? I'm sorry. Oh, how the ball comes back. Like, like. Uh. Oh, the the release is from like. Okay, yeah. So if I were to go pitch right, I would come here, and then I would get to this point, and then I would release. So if you want to release that. Sorry, I didn't mean to unmute you. Unmute all. Okay, there we go. Anybody else? Questions? No? All right, so, hey, Coach Kayla really knows what she's talking about. Very cool stuff. Thank you for showing up today. Um, she is one of our, Thank you. She's our advanced pitching coach here at Top Gun, so this is all over. You, know, you guys come in, see, see her for anything, all right? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Building, building tomorrow. Goodbye. Four o'clock. So, leave me. It's okay.